Hey friends, it's Marie at Living Felt. Thank you so much for joining us today. In this session, we are going to decorate our Christmas stocking. We wet felted this Christmas stocking together in our last show, and we promised to needle felt a fun little design on the front. This is a sweet little winter scene, and hey, you don't even have to have a stocking to do it. You can needle felt this onto wool felt and use that to create a Christmas card, turn it into a pillow, needle felt onto linen, sew that into something else. You can even frame it and just put it out for the wintery season. Doesn't even have to be for Christmas. This is absolutely beginner friendly and the techniques you're going to learn in this project will help you build for future 2D needle felting. So let's jump right into it. Thank you everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. So last week, if you weren't here for the live show, we wet felted a Christmas stocking and it's a pretty simple project. We used both our MC1 batting and the short fiber merino bats. So it's really soft on the outside and I think it weighs just over two ounces. I think when I, I weighed the final product, it weighs 2.2 ounces. And our goal today is to needle felt a design onto that. A question we often get is, can you needle felt onto something that's been wet felted? So let me see if I can say this slowly. You can wet felt something and then needle felt onto it. You can even wet felt it again after that. You can needle felt something and then wet felt it and then needle felt onto it again after that. What you're doing when you wet felt is you're making a handmade felt. A handmade felt that has been created with the wet felting process is going to be stronger than something that you hand needle felted. So if you're looking for durability or something to really hold up, consider wet felting as part of the process, whether you wet felt it 100% to create that canvas or you needle felt it and then wet felt it before you put your design on. But it's really gonna hold up over time. So when you think of wet felting uh, as part of the process, think of hats, parts, purses, boots, things like that, that are going to get some use and wear and tear. So today we're going to decorate this and do we have any questions before we jump in? No questions yet, but Anne says, I love those colors. It looks so snowy. <laughs> yes. So I designed this to needle felt a winter scene on, and I had a very difficult time. I'd love to hear how many people have the same challenge. So for me, I had a difficult time choosing one subject. There were so many different winter scenes. I wanted to needle felt that that is what kept me from getting started. And I just have so many ideas that I'm interested in. So what we did as a result, this is just my draft and we're going to do our best to get it done today. This image I'm calling Cozy Neighbor. So last year we needle felted this red cabin in the snow. And this year we decided to give him a neighbor. And I started to work on a little guy dragging a sled with a Christmas tree on it. And I didn't finish. So, <laughs> so this is my draft image. And so why don't we just take a look at the supplies we're working with. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is what is inside my slipper. Since this is a really narrow space. I cut a slice off of our green soy pro work surface. So this is a needle felting work surface. It is highly environmentally friendly. It's made in a zero waste facility. Um, it's got two sides to it. You pretty much use a side that has more of a skin to it. And it's not designed to take you know, deep punctures of your wool. It's really designed for a light tacking, but it fit really well inside my stocking. So I cut a big slice and shoved it down in there so that I didn't have to wrestle with the other foam. And it should be easier to get out too. Okay, so let's take a look down here at what I have. Uh, we have our canvas, of course. You could wet felt a canvas or needle felt a canvas, or you could just use a wool felt sheet. And that is what I made this sample image on, is just our 100% one millimeter wool felt sheet. If you get the kit for this project, this is what you're gonna get is our one millimeter felt. Um, you're also going to get a little document that will include a reference image, and you'll see why that's important in a moment. And it'll list all the colors in the supply pack. What I am working with primarily is our MC1 batting. Our MC1 batting is a domestic fiber. Uh, Holly was showing that to you in the primary pack. It's short and crimpy. It comes in over 90 colors. This is our cotton white and this is aspen gray. So we're gonna work with MC1 in a variety of colors and this is a peek at, at those here. But we're also gonna work with CX2 bright white. And I wanted you to see these all together, how white, white, white that is. So people use this a lot in their winter scenes or when they want something super bright. It's a different 
fiber. It's not even from the same continent. You'll feel the difference. It's a little crunchy and a little coarse, but it really is a nice, nice, bright white. So uh, what else do you need? You're going to need a needle felting foam uh, base of some sort. Mine is inside of my slipper and then felting needles. So for felting needles, I if I needle felt the background, I used our new punch it tool loaded with 42 triangles. Uh, I also used a cluster of 42 triangles, uh, 40 triangle green, and then a 38 star or 38 spiral. Something just a little more aggressive. Sometimes you want the fiber to really be matted down. All right, how are we doing? Are we ready to get started? We are ready to get started. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so let me get this image for you here. And let's see. Okay, y'all, so I'm sitting at my table and what you wanna do is just get all of your fibers together and then if you get the kit or we're gonna make a download available too, you're gonna to want to print out the reference image and use it. So I designed this to be just about the size of the stocking and let's look at how that looks. And then I'm gonna zoom in for you so you can see really close. All right, so this image is just about the width of the stocking and I wanted to take up this whole kind of area. And um, decide kind of where it's gonna lay. So you can see I had gray here and white here and blue here. And if you're starting from a blank canvas, you're gonna wanna cover the background first with a mixture of colors. So let's look at, we'll apply some of those to this since I don't want all of this to be gray. And I'm gonna zoom in. And Anne's gonna interrupt me with your questions as we go along. And that's just how these sessions work. They're very interactive. So people who are watching the playback on YouTube don't get to ask the questions. They just get to benefit from all of your questions. Debbie asked, does the wool stick to that type of that green soy foam as much as the black foam? Well, you know, these are open celled products. So, you know, they've got a bunch of little pores in them, just like your skin do. And when you poke these needles through, there's a propensity for it to grab on. So you definitely want to use shallow strokes. So is it possible? Yes. And you will have to just get our hand in here when we're done and release those fibers from the foam. So try and keep your strokes as shallow as you can while still tacking the project down, okay? All right. Now, what I wanna do is kind of, let's see, we'll use this a little more as our reference image. What I wanted to do was get some blue in the sky, so I can get centered here for you. Get some blue in the sky, white in the sky, and gray in the sky. Working with our MC1 cotton is how I created the sky. And this is a short staple a really lofty little fiber. So what I did was I took some of the white and just a little pinch, like this is winter blue, I think we're including in the kit. If you have blue frost or something like that, use that. And then even I wanted it to have just a pinch of brightness to it, and this is Marina. Marina's a little bit towards the turquoisey, but still kind of heathered. And I just want to blend those together so that I get this little modeling in the sky and I don't have to overthink it. If I just get everything out of the way. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is blend. And usually what I do is some kind of stacking. So I'm just going to take these bits and pull. Just stack and pull and stack and pull. Now, if you have a long fiber uh, like the New Zealand Coriadel or a Merino top or something, it's not going to be as easy to do. If you have a short fiber like the short fiber bats, you can blend it in. Like if you have the light gray in the short fiber bats and you don't have it in the MC1, you can blend them in together. I definitely have used those two together. But what we're going for is just some color in the sky without having to intentionally lay it all down. And so this is just a blend. How much did I use? Gosh, you're just gonna have to eyeball it. I'm gonna say start on the lighter amount and then add a little more if you want it more strong. And if it's too strong, you can either add more white or you can add a little sheath over the top. And I'm sure we'll be doing that at some point in the wall hanging. Okay, so I have this kind of blended here and I don't know how well you can see it, but you can see there's little flecks of blue in there. 
When I choose a needle for laying down something like this, what I want is it not to grab the needle to grab the wool too aggressively and make a point. So I'm going to use a finer needle like the 42. And looking at this picture, I want to seat my picture so it's kind of like, well, I want this to be maybe the houses will be right about here and the sky will kind of drift up here into this light blue. And if that's too close, if it, if it, you know, what you're viewing on your end, if that looks too close, let us know and we'll back it out. So what I'm going to do is take this and just kind of spread it across. Since I already have that gray back there, um, I, ha I have a little helper. You know, it's already kind of filled in. But here's what you can do. Just grab it and pull. Like, you probably want your sky, things in your sky to feel like they're going this way. Clouds are more going this way, they're not going this way. So if you have any colors trailing, you would want them to go side to side. Karen asks, when you're blending the fiber together, does it matter which direction you pull the fibers? No, I pull them in all directions because this is a batting and we do want them all mixed up. So I pull it in all. I just keep twisting it and pulling it in all directions because I want it to be kind of random. And the fiber's already mixed up going in different directions, but if you have, so that just already starts to give us just a little bit of a mottled sky, something other than white, something other than blue. And if you want a little more blue in there, well, you could even blend a little more into this piece. I'm going to leave this one just like it is. And you can't tell whether the blue is peeking through the white or the white is peeking through the blue. <laughs> and so we're just going to tack that down. But before I do, along our horizon here, if like this is where my houses are going to be, along my horizon here, I want to muddy up the horizon a little bit because there's always a bunch more going back there than you realize, like trees and such and you don't want to put them in after. So I'm going to take a little bit of willow and a little bit of aspen gray right here. A little bit of aspen gray. Some I'm going to put down straight willow and some I'm going to blend, blend willow and aspen just to kind of mix it up. So here's a little willow and aspen. It's about a 50-50 mix. We want it to be hazy and not too strong. And what happens is if you're looking through trees or if you're looking through the houses, you just get a sense that there's something else happening back there. And it makes it not just stark white. So I'm going to just kind of lay this down. It's kind of the magic of the batting is that you can just kind of spread it out and lay it down and that's going to give us some depth to whatever we put back there. And now if you're going to have any direction to anything along this horizon, go up. So take any of those fibers and go up because trees would go up. Anything else would be going up. Could you use the short fiber merino bats to needle felt this picture? You, it could, so the question is, can you use the short fiber merino bats? And you can, so, but I would rather, I would rather encourage that you blend in something a little more coarse because they can be a little resistant to the needle. They're so fine and they're so slick that using them 100% will not be as satisfying as working with the MC1 batting. And just, you know what, try it once. I used it once on the background of a, a pet portrait and I needled and needled and needled and needled and needled and needled and still I could see needle marks and it was just driving me bonkers. So I would say, test it for yourself and you know, see how you feel. Okay, now this is all my background. I'm gonna be putting in some trees and some foreground, but the first thing I wanna do is, is uh, tack this down. So with all this in place, I kind of methodically approach it and I'm lightly tacking. I kind of, rather than jump all over the place, I usually kind of work my way across like you do shelf paper or wallpaper or something. And then I'll go back. Initially, I just want to get everybody laying down. The thing about a project like this is you really can't get it wrong, you know. It's, it, it goes beyond even having a happy accident because you can cover up anything that you don't like and so much gets covered up anyway with the foreground that um, you can, and you can even take out things that you don't particularly like. But I would say for the moment, just kind of get a design in place and we're going to let the edges just kind of fade out rather than try and contain it in any kind of frame. 
and we're going to be going back over it. So it's fine to kind of get it down and then go back over it more later. Now, if you're concerned at all, and I usually wouldn't, wouldn't do this, but if you're concerned at all about your fiber really sticking to your foam in there, then occasionally just reach your hand inside and lift it up. And that'll keep it from getting overly embedded and it'll keep you familiar with what's happening under there. So before we jump to that, before we um, get to our houses and such, let's get some trees in the background. On this one, I really wished I had put a few more in or made them a little taller. Use any colors that you like. Your trees, goodness, they could be pink if you want. I'm going to be working with um, some spruce and some leaf green. And I'm going to mix these two together so that I have a little bit of variegation in my foliage. So just like we did before, I just take a pinch of each and I'm going to stack and pull. And you don't want it 100% blended. You want to see some variegation in there so that when you put it down, it's like you're getting double your bang for your buck. You know, you don't have to go and put in all the variegation. You're sort of lightly blending it now so that you have a bit of a modeled effect. Now, you can though start your trees. Now, this is way back in the background, so starting the trees with 100% uh, green can be a little bit strong. Um, you can blend that with your willow or even your uh, light gray. I even blended mine some with some of the short fiber bats that on this one, some of the short fiber bats that we needle felted with, but just I mean that we wet felted with but in this case let's blend some willow and some spruce together so you can see what I mean if we blend these together it's just gonna mute that green a little bit keep in mind that if you put too much detail way back in the horizon whether it's mountains or um, you know the tree line if it's too strong and too uh, prominent it won't look like it's far away there'll be something about it that just looks a little odd and you won't know what it is so there's a few different ways to go about this this is the way um, this is one way I like to do evergreen trees so what we're going to do is I'm going to make this one rather tall and I am going to start poking it in and give myself a nice line down we can do a couple at a time but this is how we'll do it now we're not going to see all of the bottoms of all the trees but not knowing where our houses go yet is this show let me know if I need to be closer on anything because we definitely have room to zoom in I just don't know how much my fingers are taking up the screen that you're looking at so let's just zoom in a little bit here what's nice about the MC1 is you really can just sort of grab it and drag it and don't worry about not filling in every little space yet all I'm doing is grabbing a piece with the end of my needle, starting poking on one end, and then drafting the fiber out to the other. Mostly with your tree, I would say start with just getting your basic shape and try to get some branches in there. And then we'll just keep going back and filling over. So just try to get your basic shape in place. Adrian shares, I love these. Even though I'm usually working on something different, it feels like real studio time with friends. <laughs> we agree, Adrian. That's Adrian in Canada. Mm -hmm. Cherie says, I love bonsai for trees and plants with its heathered blend. Oh, yeah. Bonsai is a good one, as is wintergreen. And in this kit, we just opted to include spruce. I think you get with the kit, you get spruce, you get evergreen, and leaf so you get three really nice greens now you can even drag these branches down a little bit you know before you tag them all the way sometimes the bows see, see, tend to seem to go up and sometimes they go down but keep in mind that this way back here is not going to be so detailed let's get another one in and I'll show you what I mean and what needle are you using? Right now I'm using the 38. This one happens to be a spiral. I probably, if I had been paying attention, I would have probably picked a star out of the drawer, but I like a spiral too. I like them all, honestly. There's room for all needles in them. Um, let's, put, let's put another little guy right here. And I'm gonna make them go a little bit faster. So this is gonna kind of look the same. So let's ask some questions now. 
or share something with us, maybe what scene you're wanting to needle felt. Let's see, Lori is hoping to wet felt some stockings with her grandson this week. Oh, how old's her grandson? That'd be nice to know. Uh, Karen says, I haven't tried to do a picture yet, but it will definitely be in my future. This is this scene is actually what it looks like here in Phillips, Wisconsin. Oh, man, that sounds so neat. Okay, so see, these guys are just kind of running together, and honestly, that's how I want it. I want them to kind of just run together. So I'm going to keep getting a few more in. I want a few to be in this background before we put our houses in. And I'm out of that mixture, so just mix it again. You can always mix, you know, a bunch if you want to get started, but I'm going to just make another mixture. Oh, Lori shares her grandson is 15. Oh, that's a great age. At 15, you know, they're going to have a little more control, you know, a little more ability to focus. Uh, the little ones might be hard to make a slipper with. They could assist, but <laughs> it might not be quite so easy. Okay. Now, but you know, this a scene like this, you can just have your trees wherever you want and as many as you want or as few as you want or even different kind of trees. We're going to put some different uh, trees in the foreground here, but we're going to have our houses here. And I'm just going to put a few evergreens way back here, but this time I'm going to add even more of the willow. So, uh, and maybe even a little of the aspen, so they're just a little more muted. So I grabbed just a pinch of aspen. Uh, and a pinch of willow along with the green that we already made. So don't be afraid to blend your blends. And we're just going to mute this out a little bit more. Okay. So this is going to go what behind will be my my red cabin. Like I said I I had these visions of doing a town and an ice skater pond and so many. Honestly, I think I could stay in Christmas mode for a couple of more months. That would be fine oh, with me. Sure. <laughs> Anne says for sure. I told her that when I run out of ideas, if I if I run out of ideas this year, she can just remind me that I said that. <laughs> <laughs> that I could just start working on Christmas next year. So this trees, these trees, I'm not going to go all the way down. And notice that I'm not even being all that specific. We're just kind of getting the suggestion of trees back here. You probably heard me use that phrase before, the suggestion of something. It's just kind of, your, your eye's not going to go there because you're going to be focused on the foreground, but this will give some dimension to the piece and some depth. Okay, so now over these trees right here, I'm actually going to just, I want to mute them just a little bit, so I'm going to take this tiny, tiny pinch of aspen, not cotton white, not bright white, um, a tiny pinch of aspen, and even a tiny pinch of this willow. I'm going to blend them together, and then I'm just going to lay them over the top. Anything you want to do in the background, do it before you get the foreground into place. Because it's hard. Afterwards, when you try and work around, it's like if you've painted a background on after painting in the primary subject, you can see your strokes and your attempts to kind of outline. In this case, we're just going to mute it a little bit by plopping that color right over the top. And then when we put our house in front, it'll look a little more proper. And we've got all this stuff back here, so if you want to add sticks and trees and twigs and all that right now, you can do it or you can decide where your houses are going to go. So here's the reason that you want uh, the reference image, potentially, is if you're feeling a little shy, then you can cut out that reference image that we've given you and you can decide where you want your houses to go. So where do you want your little peoples to live? Uh, how far over, how close together, switch them around, you know, how, how do you see this little scene? Um, maybe you want to just have one big, big house, you know, not two openings. It, I just told my husband, we, this, this would be a great little place for us to settle and who would be our neighbors? I don't know, but it would, it would be fun. Now, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not Bob Ross. She ain't no Bob Ross, so we all know that. And Bob, you know, just carves out a, a little roof line right away. What I like to do is kind of trace out where that roof eave is, and that gives me a guide for the bottom of the house as well as the top of the house. So I'm going to start with the red one right here, and I'm going to take some of my um, dark chocolate, so or dark brown or black or, you know, whatever color you have that will mix well, 
and um, I'm going to just trace out what would be that little eave line. And if you're still not confident, you can cut this out. But you know what? You could figure this out. Here's our little, here's our reference image, remember. So if I prop him up, can you see him? We'll put him right there. Not, you can't see him. Just for people who might be stopping by to check us out. That's kind of what, what we're going for right there. Lori says, you, oh, you wouldn't need neighbors. You could just have a craft room in the other house. Yeah, I, I definitely considered yeah. that, Lori. That could just be <laughs> where my studio is or mine and my husband's studio. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Just start that eave right there. I'm going to drag it down to some kind of a point and then straighten it out. You don't have to worry about making it exact. I think, you know, that each one will be different makes it really fun. So then just match that angle. Draft. All you do is poke the wool in and draft it and drag it down so that we see the side of the house there. Now, if you did our little 2D cabin in the woods last year, this is going to feel familiar already. And I'll even just bring this around so I know how far back I'm going to go. The next thing I'm going to do is put on my red, and I really am going to let this house uh, and the whole design just kind of fade out at the edges. I don't want it to be so specific. I have here red and chimney in the kit, right? So red, this is true red and chimney. And what's fun about that is when you blend them together, again, you'll get the mottled nature. So true red is bright and chimney is kind of ready looking. So I'm just going to blend those together a little bit just to tone the red down. And I'm going to fill in the front side of my little domicile here. I'd like to at least spend a little bit of winter in a place like this. At least a little bit. If I had lots of provisions and stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> now, when it comes to doing this kind of design, first of all, I'm just going to kind of spread this wool out, and we're going to fill it in. We're just going to fill it in. You don't even have to make it a solid 100% at first. You can just kind of barely get it in there and then go back with some accents. This is the 40 triangle. See how you like that for tacking down that color quickly. Boy, I tell you, this, this green soy foam is really satisfying to needle felt into. I don't know what it is. There's just something about the texture. It feels really good to needle felt into. So what you want to do is just kind of tack that down and kind of stay within your lines. Don't worry about the bottom too much, except you, you, might, you know, may not want your house too tall. So all you have to do is put your finger on the fiber, pin, pin it down, and then tear it off wherever you don't want it. But what we can do is go back and fill in with some accent dark and light. We need to put in a door and such. And keep in mind where your little devising line is there so that you can uh, accent that again once you get those in. How many people, is there anybody get, that's working on their, uh, decorating their stocking or needle felting something too? I know we didn't upload uh, images or anything. Now this um, little 42 triangle is great for just like doing a quick flattening. Now this picture, if y'all are brand new, if you've never needle felted before, for those who have, they know, something like this, getting all the details just right requires some time. So this is really like drafting out the image, what we're doing right now. Getting it refined and beautiful takes a little time. So spend a little time, you know, after you get your basic idea in place and go around and just tighten up all the little bits. You'll be glad you did. When you go back and look at it in five and ten years, you'll be glad that you spent that time. Oh, Iva shares that she's working on an elf that she started last year. Oh, that's so fun. Uh, Mary Ellen is needle felting snowman ornaments from our kit. That's so cool. We've, we've really enjoyed seeing all the little um, mason jar ornaments that came out. And oh, the skaters, really. All the skaters have been so dreamy. Lots of fun projects y'all have joined us in this year. And we're just so grateful because it just makes everything that we do worthwhile. There's the basic idea of our house, and look, it doesn't match this one exactly. Who cares? Every house is different anyway. You give the architect the plans, they change them anyway. <laughs> Tell them what you want, they put in what they want. I'm going to grab our CX2 Winter White, and we're just going to trace out that roof line. So we're going to start with this one right here and go all the way up to wherever you think the peak is for yours. That's where I feel like mine is. And you can see now why we didn't finish those trees. Where you've got this big wisp wispy end, just needle felt below it and then snake it back down. We want that snow kind of rounded. 
drag this down as far as you want. Anchor it down so you're pulling it into that point. You don't even have to think about it all that much. And then what you can do is pinch it off and you can just fold that edge right back up so that you have a real nice clean line. Just fold it back up on itself and needle felt it into place. So all those little wispy edges, just bring them right back up into that roof line. Okay, let's get the rest of our little roof in place. And I can already see my house is a little wonky, which is just like me. <laughs> I don't do straight lines really well. I like curves a lot. Swirly do's are really popular <laughs> in my world. <laughs> swirly do's, I do good. Pretty good at swirly do's. And then I'm just going to bring that roof line right down to about where I want it here. And I'm going to bend this fiber back so that we can just fill in the difference. And I'm going to have to cook on this so that we can get as much done as possible during our session together. We spend about an hour together. I have no idea how Bob Ross managed to do entire paintings in 30 minutes. But magic he was, I ask him for guidance all the time. <laughs> oh, Connie says straight lines are overrated. Straight, thanks Connie. Okay, so this being our roof line here, what you can do is kind of get to where you think. Notice that I'm drawing like a line below where the fiber ends and then you can just fold it back down. So trace yourself a little straight line. If you feel like you need an assistance, put your little house in place, but you really don't. And then fold that fiber back down to get a nice straight roof line and fill this roof in as much as you need to, you know, to get it where you want it. Adrian says, LOL, I was thinking you were the Bob Ross of wool. <laughs> that would be the highest compliment. If you could make me Bob Ross, Captain Kangaroo, <laughs> then my, my, I don't know, then my epitaph will be filled out when I, <laughs> I will, I will feel complete. Okay, so this is kind of rough and ready on, on that roof, which is fine. And you know what, instead of it being 100% white, drop a pinch of blue in there, uh, just a, just a little pinch and maybe across the back and that's going to give it just a little bit of life. It doesn't have to be 100% white. It can have a little blue in there, a little shadow or something. Now, let's get us a little door in place and some windows, and we'll definitely want to get in our little, our little road here. Let me see if I can move this over. Our little road, and I'll just try and get at least one of these big trees in so y'all can see how this goes. So let's get our little windows in. And this is, like I said, it's still really rough. Getting it refined is going to take sitting down and working on it. You're gonna have to have some patience to sit down and just get everything tacked down flat. But to make a little window, you don't have to fuss over it. You can drop down a little clump of fiber and just needle felt in one point, go over to the other point. You see that? One point, go over to the other point, scoot that wool down, and then kind of start to make a little rectangle and add a little more where you need it. Take a little pinch, just start poking it into place. We're gonna put a little bit of snow at the bottom of this window seal anyway. The only thing you wanna do is kind of match your angles, match the angle of the roof line and we're gonna put snow down here to um, create that angle of the bottom of the house. So you can take your little window and then drop a little snow just right underneath. Just put a little clump down and scoot it where you want it. Are you planning to wet felt the seam after you? No, 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 no. I'm just gonna needle. No, I'm just gonna needle felt it into place. I don't want to fuss with with wet felting it. I'm gonna needle felt it really, really well though. I'm gonna needle felt it really, really well so that it all lays down. Now I'm going to dirty up the underneath side with a little brown. I want it to be a little bit darker. I want it to have a little more character underneath that roof line, a little more outline. You may not be able to see it on both, uh, both sides of the eave, depending on the angle of your house, but you probably can see it you know, at the top there and at least down one, one side of it. The same way with the door, we're just going to carve out a little door. 
We don't have a palette life, knife like Bob, but all you do is anchor it down, drag it, and scoot it where you want it. What's the, what color of yellow did you use for, to make the window? Oh, the, I'm just using mango. I'm using mango. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a little bit of a door in place. You can add a window up there if you want. If you want this to look a little more barney, you know, you can draft some brown down just like this. Real lightly though, I would try not to be too specific with it. Try not to be overly contrived. Let it just kind of taper down. Okay, so there's our little house. Let's see how quickly we can get a yellow house in and we'll at least get into one of our trees. So this is my little yellow house. I like the trees kind of peeking through the, the back there. So we're gonna trace this out. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of the chimney actually. There's a little bit of red uh, to do the eaves under there. A pinch of the mango so it's not too red. I just want it to feel a little ready under the eaves. So I'm using a pinch of the chimney and a pinch of the mango to do my roof line this time. Oh, Connie says those little tiny details are one of the many things that make MC1 rock. Oh. It's so easy to achieve. <laughs> Connie. Okay, so here we go. I don't want this house to be too big and I don't want it to be too far down so my roof line is going to go right about there that's about my roof line probably i might go back with a little bit of brown but we'll see i'm going to make this one a little more narrow i think my and i'm just going to bend it on back how big is my house not too big we're just going to stop right about there I think sometimes, you know, finding a reference image, using a reference image or working off a reference image, it's not really a cheat. It like, what it does is it gives you something, especially if you're learning, uh, like me. Doing 2D and stuff is always a bit of a challenge for me. Um, it's not something I've schooled in. It's not something I've studied or practiced. So it helps me sometimes to have a little bit of a reference image. So don't, you know, don't feel bad if you make a picture from somebody else's image um, as long as you have the permission to, um, just use it as a learning tool. Even, you know, Bob would always say, do this painting, do this picture. So do this picture. If you're wanting to learn how to needle felt in 2D, this is a picture that just anybody could pick up and try. So give it a whirl and then share it in our group, Living Felt Friends. We'd love to see what you end up coming up with as a result of these projects. Because you know what, there's always a variance. There's always something different and unique. That's the thing about felting. No two pictures are exactly alike. Okay, I'm just filling in my house here. Filling in, just tapering the wool out. If y'all have any questions, now's the time to ask them or any thoughts. Ooh, I think when Jennifer makes hers, she's going to include a chimney with smoke. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I didn't get the chimney in on these. I just ran out of time. But that it was my intention too, so that's my goal is to get a chimney in there. Because how can you live out here in the woods and not have a smokestack? Exactly. You gotta have a chimney. You need a cozy fire. Yeah, you do. Okay, I'm not too worried about filling in every little bit of this because I'm gonna be adding some things like a window and a door. Um, but we want the major areas solid. So get a little more in there. And we can always go back, you know, those initial lines were just guides to get us started. We can always go back and add those in. So here comes my snowy, my snowy rooftop. If you're just learning to needle felt, play with the different needle sizes and see what you like. Everybody has a different hand. Everybody has a different style. So, you know, throughout a picture like this, you might be happy to use the same needle throughout, or you might find yourself like me, switching depending on what you're doing. So test those out. We have, I think, 10 different needle sizes and we offer a super variety pack so you can get a three pack of each one. And then you'll just have everything that I have to work with, all the same stuff. You know what I like about this is how fun it is that it's like really rough one moment and then starts to look like something in the next. You go from like, what is she doing? <laughs> to, hey, look, it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a thing. Don't worry about the rough stages. Every work has a rough stage. 
Well, Carol's going to pull out her old Christmas cards for inspiration. Absolutely. Christmas cards are, I definitely looked at a lot of Christmas cards, and then I laughed that I ended up with a, a very similar a house as we did last year. I guess I like, there's something about a red house in the snow that is appealing to me. It feels, it feels pretty iconic. <laughs> iconic. Okay. Now, again, rough and ready, kind of a draft phase. You're going to, all you really need to do is go around and keep uh, adding wool where you think you need it and straighten lines where you think you need them. You can gently guide your wool down and go back and trace under these little areas. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the brown, dark brown now, and a little bit of the chimney, and just clean that up. And I'm even gonna use the same color for the window, probably a little bit of the chimney. So I'm just gonna trace right under this eave here, poke the wool and draft it back. I need it more. So sometimes the fiber, when you see me switch, sometimes that needle isn't really grabbing onto the fiber like I want, and then you switch to a more aggressive needle like this 38 uh, spiral, and boom, it, it grabs the wool, and the wool doesn't just keep pulling out of your project. So that's kind of what to, why I say switch, the, switch up the needles and see how you feel. So I'm going to use this very same color for the door and for the window. So you can just plop down a little bit right there and plop down a little bit right there and then just guide it into the shape that you want. So look, it's just rough. When I'm not drafting, I'm more likely to pick something like the uh, 40 triangle or a 42 triangle if I'm not drafting the fiber out. And you know, you might decide to use the leaf green. Like if you get the kit, you might decide to use the leaf green or the marina blue to make your to make your houses or add another house. I really wanted to have kind of a turquoisey house in here somewhere and Ooh. didn't get that far somewhere in the background. But what I did want was this piece to look a little more like a watercolor and less like a um, you know, a pencil drawing. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to have a little more ethereal, vintage Christmassy card feel to it, which very often were watercolors, it seemed like. Very often they look like watercolors. So just for good measure, I'm gonna drop a little snow underneath that uh, window seal. And we can also pile some up around the houses. Lori asks, what do you do with all your leftover little pieces that you have blended? Oh, those little bits, Lori, that's a great question. So she wants to know, what am I going to do with all this stuff, especially the blend, the blended bits? I have a little collection vessel in my studio, and then I make what I call like a kitchen sink bat out of them, and then I'll use them as a core wool. So I will just put them all on my drum carter. Okay, so I know we're pushing up against the time. How does that happen? It's why we do such little projects when we're together. But what you can do is cluster a little snow next to your houses, give yourself a little bit of a snow bank. I'm gonna try and get some stuff done in here real quick together. I'm gonna get a little bit of the winter blue, a little bit of the aspen gray, and the cotton white. I don't want bright, bright white here. I want some cotton white. I'm gonna blend these together. Uh, aspen gray might be a little light. We'll use these blue and the white together. What we want is a little footpath between the two places because these two houses got to visit and maybe a little road to get you out. Mm, important. Yeah, you got to be able to get around so the people are trucking through the snow. But we also got to get in at least one of our foreground trees as part of, part of our tutorials. I want to show you how to do that. So here's what you can do with this. Now notice how just blended and blue it is. If it's too strong, once you put it down and you don't like it, you can always add some white over it. But take this blue, kind of drag it where you want it. Use your finger, hold it down, and start to drag it in some direction. I wanted to create a little bit of a trail this way, and then I want a little bit of a trail from the two doorways in between each other. And then what we're going to do is just tack all these little loose bits down and the you know the tacking down then you get to evaluate how do you like it how do you like it what do you want to change what do you want to add Leslie asks how hard would it be to pull up something if you don't like the placement in this not hard at all in this you could just dig in there and, and grab it out you know if something's wet felted already well that's a whole different story but in this case if you don't go too far you know make your decision early then you should be able to pull it out pretty well
So I think that looks like, from your view, you can kind of see that there's a difference in color here and we kind of have a little path going. Could it be stronger? Yes. And if you want it to be stronger without being too, too specific, grab some of your willow and just trail that, like if you want it to look like there's kind of ruts in the road, grab some of the willow and just trail it out and it will add a little bit of depth maybe along where it looks like the edge of the snow line is and once you tack it down it's going to feel a little more mm, variegated you know not just the blue and the white and if you get like a little cluster like that then just grab one needle or a finer needle that's why i don't like to use too aggressive of a needle when i'm working with stuff that's really blended but you want it to look just have a little bit of depth to it maybe like ruts in the road or something okay let's get in one of these uh, bare branch trees like this so you can see how we do it we're going to use dark chocolate and i'm going to use some willow and we're going to pre-blend these so that we have some variegation in them already so that when you do the trunks and the branches you already kind of have a little bit of that variegation built in. So as Bob Ross would say, here goes the bravery test. Because he wants to put in a great big tree and you don't want to, There's we have this tendency not to want to cover the work that we just did, but it really adds the depth and dimension. So there's a few ways you can go about it. You can go top down or bottom up, depending on how, on how you're feeling. So I'm going to use my 38 spiral or triangle or whatever, and I'm going to take one, I'm going to grab like the willow at the highest point. And don't go straight. Start at one little point, give yourself a bend snake it around, give yourself another blend, come right over your house, you can do it. Just keep dragging some wool as you go down and don't worry about getting it all fleshed out in the beginning. Just drag it and get it started. So now we're going to go back and fill in the rest and now that you kind of see where the base is, you can even go from the bottom up. Just tack and drag as you go and fill in your trunk a little bit. And then for all these branches, you can vary it between just the straight willow, uh, straight willow and your blend. And we're just gonna keep wisping off of this. Don't be afraid to go too high. And I'll tell you that one of the things I found was I had a tendency to wanna make all the branches the same length. And so um, break that up too. Don't make all the branches the same length. There's some red in there. I'm going to drag some here. Debbie says, hey, Marie, Ross, we are all <laughs> still waiting on a felting Friday. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I think I forgot. I want it. I want to have a felting Friday. <laughs> There's a lot of other work <laughs> that I end up getting caught up in. Maybe one or two things. I know. I, I really would love to just kind of like hang out with you guys and felt live on a Friday. That would be fun. <laughs> so notice this tree doesn't look like much right now, but what you're going to do is just keep dragging these branches. Now, if you're more comfortable, you can spread the wool out in advance. I tend to do exactly what I'm doing, but I'm going to flesh out the trunk here and it'll feel a little more interesting if you put another tree next to it on either side. It doesn't really matter, but then you can kind of let those branches combine into each other. The, the, all the, the top branches, they'll kind of create a little, you know, a nice little spread together. Patricia says, that's so pretty. What an heirloom project. Uh-huh. You know, I think it could be, you know, especially I think what makes it really special is the fun you have making it, at least for me. You know, it's like the more fun you have making it, then the, I don't know, the more fun it is to share it, whether you gift it or keep it, you know, teach somebody what you learned, whatever that is. But the more fun you had doing it. I think, you know, we have a tendency sometimes to rush and post something on Facebook rather than just sit with it and enjoy that process. And I would say, you know, keep some of it for you for a little bit. Savor, just savor it a little bit and enjoy that process. Enjoy, enjoy the make because I think that's a really big part of it art is the creation process, mm. not the judging, you know, not the selling, 
all of that. So this trees, these trees I could keep working on. I would say, you know, um, balance the, I think what I want to do is shift my, shift my foam under there a little bit. Balance the, um, balance the branches, but they, you know, they don't have to be perfect. You don't have to overthink it. So notice, here's what I'm doing. I'm just scooting my hand in here. I'm loosening all this fiber. Every time you loosen the fiber, all of this is going to feel a little more loose. So it means you're just going to have to go back over it and do it again. And what I'm going to do is keep working on my trees and notice that the branches kind of go up and this way and out up and out as opposed to going this way or that way. You can just bring them up and out. And then for doing a lower evergreen, I'm gonna use my mottled spruce and um, leaf green. And one more time, you know, scoot your foam over if you can. One more time, give yourself a little bravery test. Pick a point where it's gonna hit on this roof line and go straight up, if you dare if you dare, and just hit that point and drag it all the way down. And then work your way across the base, just like we did in the back. But what we're doing here is these ones have a little more uh, variegation because it's in the forefront. So you're gonna see it a little bit more. I'm, I need to scooch my foam over because it's not grabbing onto my foam. Now these bows I kind of want to peek down so you can kind of start them in one place and then peek them down and keep filling them in and you can also just do one side at a time. You can go from the outside into the middle of the tree. You just need to grab it. My foam, I need to scoop my foam over so it grabs it a little bit better. Okay, y'all, let's hear your final comments as we're, we're wrapping up here. It's going to take me a little while to fill in my tree, and we're out of time for me to do that whole piece. Well, Lisa says, what stunning work you do. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Oh, Jennifer says she's just thinking of making one stocking per family member to Needlefelt on as a, or one stocking per member to Needlefelt on as a family project. Oh, that sounds amazing. Esther says, the joy of creating is exactly why I felt. <laughs> That's awesome. Me too, Esther. Me too. Okay, gals, guys and gals, here's what I want to offer about this tree before I'm going to finish mine up when, well, uh, once we sign off here, I'm going to finish up my tree. But the one thing I want to add is once you get this tree all in place, um, rather than try and add the clumps of white, you can take just a little bit of that winter white or aspen gray or whatever you have. I would use the winter white. Spread it, spread it super, super, super thin. Lay it over the top and then just tack it down where you want it. So it's gonna make it seem you know, a little dusted with snow as opposed to looking so specific. And then you can just kind of needle felt it into place. Use your finer needles so that it doesn't grab it into peaks and points. And I'll be interested to see what you do here. Do you add a carriage? Do you add a dog? <laughs> do you add, I, might, I might go back and add my little sleddy guy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is keep working on my piece. And um, But so far, we, I think we have a really great start to our Christmas stocking. I'm going to keep working on mine. And what we'll do is we'll use this finished one as the final final in our kit if you're interested in that we plan to ship them on start shipping them I think on Friday um, but now I'm thinking I might want to I don't know these two images are very similar but we we might need to change the image and we're already waiting for them to come back from the printer but this is going to be my stocking for 2019 and I really look forward to seeing what you make with yours if you enjoyed this project I hope you'll leave us a comment even if you're watching back on YouTube leave us a comment and let us know what was most helpful or maybe what you want to try for your own project and make sure that you share yours in our group living felt friends that's where all the fun happens honestly every day all day long people are sharing what they made and it doesn't have to come from our kits or our products it's people all over the world Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that this project has been educational and fun to do. If you do your own or even something similar that you make from this tutorial, please share it in our Facebook group, Living Felt Friends, where we have fun every single day sharing new ideas together, inspiring and encouraging each other. And if you got something out of this session, I really hope that you'll leave us a comment down below and let us know what you gained from it. We hope you'll subscribe, hit the subscribe button and click that bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video. Video, and thank you so much for joining us for this one. Thanks y'all.